Now, as politicians start to outline their policies in more detail ahead of the general election, we want to hear what issues matter most to you. Over the course of the campaign, we're talking to voters from all over the UK and hearing what different groups care about most. Today, a group of black and Asian voters are here to tell us what issues are most important to them. Only about 6% of the politicians at Westminster in the House of Commons and the House of Lords are from an ethnic minority background. That compares to 13% of the general population. Well, we've got an audience of seven voters from different ethnic minority backgrounds to talk about the issues that are important to them at this election and uh, William I know that you feel quite strongly about representation don't you so just we'll start with you and tell us what your thoughts are on that yeah of course um, I think representation is really really important mm -hmm. um, especially because issues pertaining to a certain demographic are never going to be highlighted or pushed forward if people from that demographic are not represented within within politics at large um, I also feel like it highlights a wider issue around elitism, the fact that people from certain demographics are represented as well. So, yeah, I think it's very, very important. And Taha, um, I am Taha Koban Kute. I'm uh, the chairman of the UK Asian Business Council. I'm here to talk about the uh, representation to the UK Parliament of the BME community. Um, I have looked at other parliaments in the world and I've seen that if we talk about the US Parliament or the Australian Parliament, the representation is quite poor in the sense it's about 2 to 3 percent if we are talking about the US or the Australian Parliament. Whereas in the UK, if we are at 6 percent, I think we are still better off. At least we have those 41 MPs from the ethnic minority backgrounds who are representing us, who are our voices in the Parliament. More of the MPs from our backgrounds would be much better. I would say we have people who are standing up and down the country from the BME community and we should go out and vote for them and make sure that we see them in Parliament in the, uh, in the coming few days on the 8th of June. Do, you, do any of you feel that there should be a mechanism by which the number of uh, MPs from ethnic minority backgrounds is sort of forcibly increased? I, I think what one, one fundamental, I don't think there needs to be a, a mechanism or a methodical me mecha mechanical method but certainly uh, there, is a, there is an emerging trend that simply plonking a, an ethnic minority face as a candidate is inadequate. That person needs to be competent, needs to have credibility, uh, needs to have a track record. We have got up and down the country certain constituencies where you've got an ethnic minority face, three, three elections still there now, safe seats, the local, pop, uh, the local population gets fed up with them. They don't reflect the real life, the young life of that of the community that they try to or seek to represent. Mm. Uh, therefore, this 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 sort of uh, somewhat over simplistic connection that uh, from the Sikh community, if you put for, forward a Sikh <coughs> face, that should satisfy so you. So, Jagdish, which is your um, where, whereabouts are you? What's your constituency, uh, and what's the representation uh, that you've got? Uh, I, I'm from Coventry, uh, Jagdish Singh. I'm a, a, an active campaigner in, in the Sikh community. There is no Sikh MPs at the moment in, in the UK Parliament. Mm -hmm. That is a big topic within the Sikh community. Um, but we need to have not just ethnic minority representation, which is fundamentally important, but we need to have the right people, the right quality of person representing us. The rest of you, I mean, do you feel like your MPs are currently representing the, the issues that, that matter to you? I think personally for me, I, I feel my MP does represent me. Um, however, speaking on, on the matter of, of having ethnic minorities um, in, in parliament and in politics, I, I think I come from the point of view of educating people from the ethnic minority, from ethnic minority backgrounds mm -hmm. about ways to get involved in politics. Because in my opinion, this is the most tolerant country in the world. And I think people just need to know what to do, where to go, in order to access um, those places. So you're saying that it, it doesn't matter actually if the, if the MP no. is from an ethnic minority as long as they're attuned with, the, with what's going on in their constituency? Well I, well, I think it'll be a good thing to have a fair representation. So 6% yeah. where we have 13% of the population is not necessarily a good thing. Mm. Um, but what I'm saying is it shouldn't be um, managed, it shouldn't be, it, it should be organic. Um, but in doing that, let's provide information to those members of that community to enable them have access. 
just want to touch on that point, Lanray Salola. Just uh, introduce yourself. Oh yeah, Lanray. Lanray Salola, yeah. uh, Leadership yeah. Development Coach, and it really does come from the education. So it's not about setting quotas, but I think it's a wider community and society from if a young age, if all young people are getting the right education, good teaching, good skills, good opportunities, naturally those doors will open and you'll find a lot more Absolutely. black mm. and Asian um, politicians in place. And I think that's where the issue is. If you're, if you're waiting till t after you graduated, it's too late. Mm. We need to go back to when they're going into school, the years of three and four years old, and really giving them the support they need. Mm. There, there has been, I found that over previous decades, there has been a culture of political tokenism mm. in terms of black faces for that constituency, Sikh faces for that constituency, Muslim faces for that constituency. Mm -hmm. That's been purely superficial exercises. Absolutely. We are now, the migrant communities in this country are now into fourth, fifth generation. Mm -hmm. They've gone through that first over -simplic simplistic, ineffective process. We're demanding more now. We're demanding quality. We're demanding authentic representation. Mm -hmm. We want people from amongst us to be coming forward to Parliament. Okay, so let's broaden it out then, the, the, the key issues that, that you're thinking, the forefront of your minds in this election. Uh, just said, what, what, what is of particular concern for you? And there's quite a few, to be honest, um, and obviously we couldn't possibly go over all the things, but um, for me, being a regular black woman, British woman, who is a professional, um, as much as I know a little bit about politics, I don't really believe that... Um, all the information that I need to make really good informed choices are readily available and I don't think that um, I don't think that's helpful for us to make Who, the best decision. Who do you think that is? The medias, the governments, I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a regular woman, I'm the person that gets up in the morning and goes to work, has a family, has to do everyday things. I represent the everyday British black woman mm. and I'm fairly intelligent, as I said I'm a professional um, and I, I enjoy information and I try to get as much information as I can, but the, the man next door isn't necessarily the same as me. He, he isn't able to make certain choices because the information that you need to make great choices are just not there. Like The manifestos are all coming out this week. I mean, would you sort of take a good look at those? Yeah, no, absolutely. But again, I'm making a concerted effort to do yeah. that. Does the regular man on the street do that? I don't think so. Mm. Let's look at Brexit. I mean, people even say that word, they don't even know what the actual term Brexit means. We're flinging it around and many of us don't know what that means. I think it means um, Britain's exit, but does it? I don't know. Nobody's told me. I don't know what that means. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. I'm somebody that works all over Europe and sometimes internationally, not just throughout Europe. I actually don't know if Brexit is going to affect my work i've been working in europe for 20 years and been able to move freely and work in whichever countries i've needed to without any concerns i actually don't know if if when brexit becomes our reality if that will affect that i mean it's, it's, I mean? it's been a recurring theme it's always a recurring theme isn't it people voters sort of saying don't feel that they're necessarily hearing a, a, a clear factually based picture, whether it's because of the, the media coverage or coming from the politicians. How, how do the rest of you feel about that? Well, perhaps it's uh, quite plainly and simply a very grey area. Uh, there's no exact uh, action plan Right. Exact. I mean, I'm just thinking, though, more, more generally, you know, we've got uh, obviously NHS, education, every single issue that we're facing. Do you think that there is clarity? Are you, are you clear on which party is, is representing what you would like? I feel like we need to look at who owns the media. And I think that may be a wider issue. Um, a lot of the media is owned by the elite. A lot of the media is owned by people that want to perpetuate a certain argument. And I feel they're given the liberty to push forward certain parties and represent them a bit unfairly and a lot of people in general as she was saying don't actually read into policies and don't themselves do the research so they just eat up whatever the media give them okay. and I think that's a major issue. So let's focus then on the specific issues that are at the forefront of your minds. Shaniqua what, what's your key going into this election? Oh. As you can see, I'm a young person and I'm unemployed at the moment, but I have a youth platform in Croydon that encourages community engagement and empowers the voices of young people. So for me, the key thing is what is being done for young people? What's being done to make them feel that they can go out there and feel like they're valued and they can do anything? But in terms of what specifically? So 
things like education like you see a lot about dropping stats and you hear a lot about um tuition fees but what about things like PSHE education things that they're learning that aren't just the academic things but things that will take them into life skills in life um, in their going forward in life sex education talking about mental health talking about knife crime building up respect for each other and that communication because the key thing about knife crime is people don't always respect each other, respect their lives, are able to communicate healthily and just trying to find a way to get to the root issues of that because there's a lot of talk about stop and search but what about getting to the root of it, what about working with people on the ground, the community organisations, helping them to help those young people. It's interesting that you've gone straight into community issues rather than you know the, the sort of bigger picture on the NHS, does that chime with with the rest of you. It's a, it's a really big thing and when you talk about communities on the ground, um, in 2008 I was part of a programme which was set up by the Labour government called the Reach Role Model programme. And what they found was that young black men um, and young black boys were overrepresented in the prison system, they weren't doing well in school so they thought of what can we do to help them. What they did, they found 20 young black people in different industries who were doing well and I was one of those 20. And we got to speak to students in schools, prisons, young offenders institutions to help raise their aspirations and mentor them. When the Conservative government came into power, that was scrapped along with other um, community um, events and things that were doing that. And that's the type of things that we need. We need to connect more. We need to build relationships. We need to build communities. And it's all very well and good because obviously I don't want to pay lots of taxes. Um, I want to do well and, and have houses and all that stuff. But if your basic community is struggling, if people are not connecting and don't see opportunities, it doesn't matter if the 5% are doing well, if the rest of the country are struggling. So it's really important we start to look at those people who really need help, really need support. And that, that really should be a focus because you're only as good as your, your sort of lowest common denominator. If, if the people at the bottom are struggling, as a country, you're not a successful country. And I think we need to really look at, as a whole, where do you want to go to? Lola, do you feel the politicians are talking about the issues that matter to you? Um, well, yes. <laughs> um, personally, to, to, they, they are to me. Well, which are the, what are the issues? Education is a big one for me. I have two children. So How old are your kids? My daughter is 15 and my son is nine. Okay. And it's important to me that um, I know that they have access to a first class education without necessarily having to um, be rich to provide that for them. Um, but beyond that, um, it's also how my children as black children are treated in school. Now my daughter is in an excellent school, so there are no problems there and, and I appreciate that. But sometimes I, I kind of worry about how they place black children, especially black boys, in a box and um, they're not when allowed... When you say they, you mean the, the, the school? The education system, the teachers, and they're not allowed to flourish. Um, and, and that is a concern for me. And of so, course, so give us an example of what you're thinking and why do you think that's the case? Um, for example, with behavioural issues, mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of times they may not understand um, the cult, cultural behaviour of, of young black boys. And we've seen quite a few documentaries and studies on, on that, that, that's out there for everyone to see. Um, and then they label them immediately from a young age um, without helping to develop them in their own in their own truth, if you like, um, and, and, and it may be because there's not a huge representation of ethnic minority educators who, can, who understand that, who understand why, mm -hmm. you know, the children behave the way they do. It may be that, I, I, I don't know the reason, but it's important to me that a child is not held back simply because they're poor or they're black um, or their parents are, you know, not necessarily um, into uh, uh, their education. I think the education system should cater for all. Okay. And listening to what Mrs. May, I'm yeah. a conservative voter, listen to what Mrs. May is saying, I, I believe in her, um, in, in her Britain that is a Britain that works for everyone, regardless of where it comes from. I don't think any of you have said the economy yet. Uh, Who do you trust on the economy? Do you, do you trust the politicians? Can I add to Larry and Lola first and then I'll go into the economy. What I wanted to say was our local mosque <coughs> has a volunteer group wherein uh, we have teachers who come in to teach children. So children who cannot afford to go to maybe private schools or do not get the right education. So they're making the housewives busy by teaching these children who are coming I in. I mean that's a local initiative though, isn't it? it? Is, that's that's not the politicians. So uh, are the politicians doing what you would want on this? 
well, the politicians should actually encourage more and more of this to be rolled out in other religious places. I'm not just talking about a mosque to happen. The, the, it could be in the Gurdwaras, it could be in the temples. Yeah. So coming back to the economy, we need a very strong person to negotiate for Brexit. Okay. We need Mrs. May, a person like Mrs. May, who will not crumble under the pressure of 27 leaders of the EU nations to get us that good deal with the single market. We need those free trade agreements with the world. The Commonwealth is open to us. I was a Remainer, I voted in Remain. That bus has departed. We need to think about how we are going to progress our economy now. I'm really sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but I really don't think that Mrs. May has everybody's best interests at heart. I absolutely do not believe that this woman has any interest in securing the lives, the economical lives, the financial lives of anybody else on in this country apart from those like her that come from her world, from her financial background, from her societal background. She absolutely does not have the interests of the regular people like myself and my next door neighbours at heart. Absolutely not. I, 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 it shocks me that I understand that everybody has different thoughts and everybody has a has a right to think what they want and choose who they want who best represents them yeah. <clears throat> but I, I, I simply cannot fathom how anybody could think that Theresa May has the best interests at heart just of everybody. I just quickly want what to wrap up by asking, <laughs> asking each of you the key, the, the issue which will be deciding your vote when you actually go into the ballot box. So let's, let's uh, just in a word please, just, just that we'll start with you. NHS and like you were saying, economy, um, education, those are the key things for me. Economy and education. Education and investing in the younger generation. Economy, enterprise and education. Um, for me, UK foreign policy, specifically in regards to Punjab and Kashmir. Me, equality and access for all. Young people and hopefully something about knife crime and mental health. Thank you all very much.